Gordon proves his point. One day, Gordon reached the big station on the mainland to find the platform crowded. It's a rail tour, explained his driver, going along the coastline to Carlisle, I think. The station master came up. Can you help, he asked. These rail tour people are stuck because their train has failed. Could Gordon take them in his train, please? Gordon's driver laughed. You'll have to hold him back, eh, Gordon? He said, but you need the fat controller's permission. And what about our return train? The fat controller agreed at once, and then the station master rang the shed. What can you substitute for Gordon's Express, he asked. There's the high-speed train that came yesterday, they suggested. It's only got one power car working, but it should keep the fat controller's timing. Philippa, she preferred Pip for short, and Emma were delighted to stand in for Gordon. Pip's cooling system was faulty, making her hot and bothered, but Emma didn't mind doing all the work. They felt honoured to visit the fat controller's railway. James, following a little later with a stopping train, was surprised when the signalman at the station beyond the works came up. That high-speed diesel's failed, he said. Go gently until you reach it, push it to the next loop, and then go round in front to pull it home. Phew, remarked James. But what about the express passengers? They won't want to make our stops. Too bad, said the signalman. Better that way than your people missing their stations. James found the failed train about two miles in front. He pushed it to the next station and then got ready to pull. I'm sorry I can't help, apologised Emma, who was in front, but we are special lightweight coaches. That's lucky, said James, who was already feeling puffed. But he found it easier than he expected. Once the train was moving, the coaches followed smoothly. As for the passengers, if they wondered about the extra stops, they didn't complain. The fat controller met them. I'm sorry we're late, sir, said James. That's all right, James, said the fat controller. I'm pleased with you. You have saved an awkward situation. Now please make Pip and Emma welcome in the shed while I arrange their journey home. The other engines were quiet at first, but they soon found the diesels friendly, and before long they were all laughing together. James was glad Gordon was away. He might, he thought, so easily have said something to upset them. Gordon came home next day. The fat controller forgave him for his smokescreen and said that he was sorry for thinking his spoiled top hat had been Gordon's fault. It had, he explained, been a steward emptying an ashtray from a carriage window. Now, Gordon, he continued, while you were in Carlisle, we borrowed a high-speed train. This has failed, and I want you to take her passengers home. He paused and smiled. Show them how we do things, eh? I certainly will, promised Gordon. Right, said Gordon's driver as they backed towards the train. Today, Gordon, my lad, you can have the run of your life. He did, too. Douglas was waiting to pull Pip and Emma home when Gordon passed. Whistled Gordon proudly, and with a swish and a roar, he was gone. Pip and Emma watched enviously. Douglas chuckled. Oh, he said to himself, Yon Gordon's eye a high-speed engine, but it's me who's pulling the high-speed train.